I just found a brand new way to test your APIs right inside of VS Code. Don't tell anyone, but it's not using Postman. What's up, everyone? My name is James Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And one of the topics that I do a lot of is focusing on productivity, especially inside of VS Code. So I'm excited to share a brand new extension from Rapid API that will help you test your API endpoints and external APIs that you want to call right inside of VS Code without having to context switch to another application. There's like four or five really unique features in here that I want to show you. So stick around for that. Now I did a video similar to this about two years ago where I used a different extension inside of VS Code to replace Postman. But I think this one by Rapid API is even better. So let's get inside of VS Code so we can check it out and see what it looks like. All right, so I am inside of VS Code and I have a really basic Express server running. So if you're not familiar with Node and Express, that's okay. But we have one endpoint, which is slash content, and it's gonna return a little bit of data. So what this data is, is this is kind of information that would uh, be posted inside of my Discord server. If you go to learnbuildteach.com and go to slash content, this is a list of content that people from my server have created. So we're just kind of simulating an endpoint that would return that information. And if we open this endpoint, you can see it returns uh, this data uh, with an array of two different objects that have link, title, image URL, and description. So that's the sample data that we're going to look at and we're going to use. And so now we'll go ahead and actually install the extension. So we'll open up the extensions tab. We'll search for Rapid API, and then we'll select that extension. We'll go ahead and click install, and then we should be good to go. All right, so with that extension installed, you'll see it gives you a little icon over here on the left, and we can start to expand this and now actually test out our API endpoints. So I mentioned that we're gonna make a request to localhost 3000 slash content, and let's go ahead and do that. So inside of the request section, we can add our new request and we can update this URL to be exactly what we just said, HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000 slash content. Now you can give this a name, so we can call this uh, get content. You can give it a description, which has the ability to have uh, kind of formatted text in it with bold, italics, code snippets, links, uh, that kind of stuff, which is really, really cool. Cool that they added this functionality in terms of the description. Uh, so we can go ahead and send this request and we should just see our data come back as you'd expect. So that works really well. Now, another thing you could do is let's say I have this URL copied to the clipboard. This is a really cool nifty feature. If I had that URL copied to the clipboard, I can open up the command palette, do command shift P and call create new request from clipboard, which will do exactly what it says. So it pasted in what I had copied to my clipboard, that URL, and then made the, or created the request. And now we can send it, we get the same results. So if you have a URL already copied to your clipboard, you can go ahead and uh, just have it generate the request for you, which is really neat. Now, another thing I think is really cool is that this is also going to respect the theming of the colors that you have in your theme. So uh, one of my favorite ones is, let's go to set or just search for theme. One of my favorite ones is Shades of Purple from Ahmad Aways, who is part of the Rapid API team. And uh, if you see here, we updated the theme and now it's getting reflected inside of the extension as well. So they've got those colors really matching and cohesive with the rest of the editor. So we can also change this to like the basic dark theme if we want to. So dark VS code, and that's going to pull in those colors and everything's going to look good. And we can just stick on shades of purple for the rest of this video. Now, a couple of additional things I want to show you uh, that are really cool is you can, uh, let's say we have an endpoint that we got from somewhere else and we haven't tested it yet in code. And we want to actually write the code to make that request. Well, this extension can do that for you, which is really neat. So inside of this request snippet, they have a dropdown for different languages that you may make these requests with. So I'll choose JavaScript. And then I often like to use the built-in fetch API. I can copy this snippet. It's going to uh, open up a new tab. I can go ahead and copy it from there. So this is going to show me or uh, give me the code to make a fetch request to this API endpoint. Now, another thing we can do is change this to be Axios. For example, I'm actually going to work on a video of comparing Axios and fetch soon. But here's an example using Axios. Those are two of the most popular ways to make HTTP requests with JavaScript. And you've got code snippets built in right there, which is really neat. Now, another thing I don't know about you, I'm kind of curious, let me know in the comments below, but I am a big fan of TypeScript. I'm becoming more and more of a big fan of TypeScript. 
So one of the problems that I have is when I make a request to either an API that I created or an API that someone else created and I'm making that request, you don't necessarily know what that data gets back or what that data looks like that comes back. So oftentimes I'll log it out to the console and go, go explore it. But here's a really cool thing. We can say that we wanna convert this JSON to a TypeScript interface and get a code snippet for this. So here's the interface representation of that data that comes back, which includes description, image URL, link, and title. So now I don't have to think about it. I know exactly what that data looks like. And if it's a TypeScript project that I'm working on, I can just drop this interface into my project and I've got typings all across everything that I'm doing and making requests to this API. Now, one thing we may want to consider is uh, what if we have an API that uh, takes some sort of uh, secret key, API key that you pass to it. So I'm gonna come in and update this endpoint with a little snippet here. And what this snippet is going to do is it's going to grab an API key from the query parameter. So query parameters are gonna look like this. So we make a request to slash content, question mark, API key equals, and then in this case, we want it to be secret. So this is the server key is secret, and then the consumer, whoever makes the request to this API will have to pass this in as a query parameter. So then in this endpoint, we're gonna get access to that variable and then compare, does the incoming API key equal the server key? And if not, go ahead and return a 401. Now this is an example for us to show how environment variables and groupings inside of the Rapid API extension work. So let's go ahead and save this. If we uh, now come back to our request, we should see that we're gonna get back uh, an unauthorized, or if we look at raw, we'll see that we have specifically HTTP response of 401. So what do we do? Well, let's move this over just a little bit. There we go. And then uh, we can add in to the request directly API key equals secret. And we should see that this is going to work. Okay, so that's gonna pass the authorization. But when we're making lots of requests to different API endpoints and all these things, maybe we don't wanna hard code that stuff into, uh, into this right here because we may have different API keys for testing, for development. You probably have them for production, et cetera. So let's see how we would do that. Inside of our environments, let's go and uh, click on manage. And let's go ahead and create a brand new group that we can work with. So let's call this uh, group two, we can leave it as the default. And then we'll rename this environment to development. And then we'll also create one for testing, for example. So let's add another environment for testing, rename that one. And then inside of our development, let's go ahead and add a variable of secret with a value of secret as well. All right, so now let's come back to our request. And now that we have that environment variable set, we could come into these uh, into the URL and start to type in brackets, come down to select environment variable. And then if we click on this, we can see we have the secret option and it gives you a little preview of what that value is. So if we send this request, what we should see is that this is still working as we'd expect, but let's then go and choose our testing environment. Now, remember that inside of our environments, testing does not have that variable set. So if we look at testing, it does not have a value for that secret variable name. So it should mean that this is actually going to give us a 401 unauthorized, which it does. So this is our way of having different environments inside of our groups for our different API requests. And we can use those environment variables to not have to hard code stuff, save them once, toggle between whichever ones we wanna use as we're testing, and it should be good to go. All right, now one other thing I wanna share with you is as you're doing a lot of work, uh, you may wanna be able to save some of this stuff. And one thing you can do is go ahead and sign in with your Rapid API account. So this is in the top right of the extension bar up here. And this is gonna take us over to sign in. I'm actually already signed into the studio. So that will have automatically signed me in because I'm already logged into the studio. But if you see inside of the studio, there are two different projects here. There's an onboarding one where they give you a bunch of stuff for free. And what we can do is we can actually uh, leverage that inside of our local environment here or our testing environment. So if we click on the uh, button next to the sign in sign out button, there's a creator open project. This shows me the different projects that I have from the studio and I can choose the onboarding project and notice this already has a ton of different requests that are grouped in these different groupings that help keep it all in a logical uh, manner. And then I can click on one of these, make the request, see the results, et cetera, just like I would inside of the dashboard. So all in all, this extension is really, really nice for being able to conveniently organize your request, make your request, have environment variables, have theming with colors and stuff that match really well. They've got some really nice little features like creating requests from a URL that's in your clipboard, 
to copying or generating JavaScript snippets for calling the API and your TypeScript types. There's lots of little neat features in here that make this extension really, really nice. So I think you should give it a shot and let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you'd like to see a video on this channel where we build an API, publish it to Rapid API, and then charge for it where you can make money as a developer for your own API, let me know in the comments below. We'll probably follow up with a video on that as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.